Hey, what's up, Jerry? No, I got th I got this interview right here at CIW. Some inmate, like Alice, something or other. Yeah. No, no, it's cool. Should, no, no, you want to you want to hook up later? What time? Nine o'clock. Okay. How's Kilroy's? All right, Kilroy sounds great. Drink drinks are on me, dude. All right, man. We'll talk to you later. Sorry I was late, I was caught a little traffic, Alice. We'll get going in just a second. Give me a second, okay? I'm gonna put this here. Okay. Just give me one second, we'll get started. <laughs> Recording. This is Thomas Ayers, Los Angeles Times. The date is April 29, 1992, and we are here in Chino, California at the California Institute for Women. Interview with A.J. Pendergrass regarding potential release uh, parole hearing. And uh, <clears throat> let's just start. Uh, Why are you recording this anyway? I want to get a verbatim transcript. Uh, I don't want to miss anything you say. You said it was okay, though. You, you signed a consent, remember? Yeah, so you just want to get my facts straight. Yeah. All right, then. Okay. Okay, so now, um... <clears throat> Can I get a cigarette? Uh, I don't smoke. I'm sorry. It's all right. I was thinking of quitting anyway. Okay. <clears throat> just tell me a little bit about yourself, Ellis. What should I say? Just your name, your full name, please. Uh, the one, how old you are. Um, you know, how long you've been here, um, why are you locked up, any of that. All right, my name is Alice Josephine Pendergrass, mm -hmm. but in here they call me AJ. I'm 29 years old. I've been here at CIW for nine years, ten months, six weeks, two days. Okay. Why am I here? I'm not really sure. Okay, well, we can come back to that, uh, just tell me a little bit more about yourself, maybe like, uh, do you have family, uh, where are you from, uh, what did you do before you got here, any, any of that? I'm from South LA, aka South Central. I got blood, but nobody I'd call family. Before I got locked up, I plan on going back to school, get my GED. What do you, what do you read? Everything. The Dictionary of Legal Terms, the Harvard Law Review, the Bible. The other day I started reading Discipline and Punish. The Birth of the Prison by Michael Foucault. You read it? No, I haven't read that one. Well, the book starts off with this real bloody botched execution. Mm -hmm. This guy, Robert Francois Damiens, he got sentenced to death for trying to kill the king. Mm -hmm. What'd you say to me? I'll fucking cut you! Hey! Hey, shut the fuck up out five there! Five-star resort in here. I wish. Anything but here is five-star. So what else does the book say? talks about 19th century prison rules in France. It goes like this. The prisoners get an early rising. Morning bread, labor, schooling, evening supper, then prayer. After they wash their hands, they go back to their cells. The first drum roll says get undressed. The second drum roll says get into bed. The cell doors close and the guards go the rounds all night. Is that what a typical day is like for you at CIW? Yep. Prisons don't change much. They're regimented places, lonely places. I got a lot of time to think. What do you think about? Think about my life outside this place, before the subjugation. Mm. Think about South LA. Mm. It's beautiful. People think it's a shithole. I think it's paradise. Paradise? Yep. Paradise. I once saw God off the corner of 54th and Hoover. How do you know it was God? Well, I've seen the devil, 
and he didn't look nothing like that beautiful black man. Well, what does the devil look like? Sometimes he's a gunshot. Sometimes he's the sound of a police siren. Sometimes it's the sound of my white daddy beating my poor mama's ass for trying to run away. Did he, did he ever lay a hand on you? <clears throat> What is this, a fucking therapy session? I'm okay. just asking, I'm just asking. Okay. Okay, what's your question? Did he ever lay a hand on you? Who? Daddy or the devil? Because if you're talking about the devil, I know him and he knows me. What about your father? Daddy was a revolving son of a bitch. If I do say so myself. Every time he came around, it was bad. He beat us, me and mama. It's like we were his property. We'd call the cops, they'd come, they wouldn't do anything. And after they left, it was like things just got worse. Mm -hmm. So you ran away from home? Yeah, I was free. That's all I wanted to be was free. Why don't you tell me about Charlie? Okay, okay, hold on. Just, just give me a second. It was a while ago. I mean, you gotta just imagine it, like how fucked up it is for a young girl to be all by herself and end up living in the waiting room at Union Station. <laughs> That's not where I pictured myself. I remember I used to walk up and down, up and down these long halls. It would break off to different terminals, but I never really went up one. I remember I used to stare at the arrivals and departure board and pretend that I was going someplace or waiting for somebody. I would see all these people. People were happy with their families, going on vacation, coming back, leaving for college. And there I was. Then I met a man. Charlie Bard. Didn't tell you he did some time in Lompo for drug trafficking. No, not at first. He was a regular guy. He worked at the Top Notch Auto, watched the ball game on Sundays. Regular guy. Matter of fact, most of the time he was in bed by 10 o'clock. Yeah, and that was probably his curfew as a parolee, but that's besides the point. <clears throat> What'd you do when you found out? I said, for Christ's sake, Charlie, tell me the fucking truth. He said he was no drug dealer. Said he was young, did some stupid stuff. He said the prosecuting attorney flipped a coin. Heads, possession of an illegal substance. Tails, drug trafficking. He called it prosecutorial discretion. The judge gave him five years. But he was arrested again, wasn't he? And again and again, according to his criminal records, a repeat offender. Tell me why you stayed with him? Because he took me in when I was living on the streets. And I loved him, if nothing else. I told him, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. But he didn't listen to me. And yet here you are because of Charlie Bard. Why you tell me about the day you got arrested? Very much to tell. Cops got me cuffed on the curb. One cop says to the other cop, shall we let her off with a warning? Other cop says, if we let everybody go, there'd be nobody in prison. And then all of a sudden things changed. My heart just sank into my stomach. I knew something was wrong. Police report says they found a kilo of cocaine under your spare tire in the trunk. Charlie's Coke. Turns out he was using me as a drug pigeon and I didn't even know it. Come on, Alice. Really? How could you not have known? Come on. Fuck you. You calling me a liar? Fuck you. I'm just saying, how could you not have known? Okay. So you get arrested. Tried and convicted, mandatory 10-year sentence, possibility of parole after three years. All that for Charlie. Why don't you just tell the judge it wasn't your coke? I did. The judge said, your car, your coke. And Charlie? I never saw him after that. Dead for all I know. Okay. So you're, so you're for parole again. You've been denied twice before. What are you going to tell the parole board next week? 
I'm gonna tell them we need a new design. A new design? Yeah. Like when God designed love. Love was a new and beautiful design. Not all this shit here. This is a terrible design. If this ain't wrong, ain't nothing wrong. 200 years from now, people are going to look back and call us savages. Savages. Okay. So what is this new design you're talking about? I don't know. I'm just a dumbass convict who likes to read. So what's going to happen to all the prisons in America? Maybe they'll get gentrified. Turn them into new condos. Time's up. Interview's over. Just, just one second. So what do you think's going to happen next week at the parole hearing? I believe. I believe I'll come back home. Acknowledge to my father. Father, I've done you wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>